But this morning, I we're going to go away from the Psalms just another day um, because I, I opened up <clears throat> a devotion this morning that I receive every day, and I don't always read it, but I began reading it, and it was just such an encouragement to me, and I, I boiled it down to a number of things uh, just to share with you this morning. And there are 10 things that I want to share this morning um, about who God is and what God gives or what God does. And everything that God does, he or everything that God gives, it comes out of his nature and character. And so we know that these things that, that God provides for us, for those who are his, are good because they come from him. And uh, uh, just, just mark it down. Everything that's good is rooted in the nature and character of God. And he is these things. So this morning, I'm just going to share with you 10 things and 10 brief verses with each one of these points as to um, as to what God is, who he is. And because of who he is and what he is, he provides those things to us. And I'm going to ask Sandy in the, um, in the comments if she'll type these titles and the verse uh, reference for you so you can go back and and look at these and just meditate on them. It's a good thing to pull aside and meditate on the things of God. And so throughout the day today, at another point of the day, maybe you'll just pull this out and look at it again. Or maybe before you go to bed tonight, you can pull it out and look at it again. I, I thought, too, it, it's a good devotion for, for maybe those who got caught up in watching the debate last night. And you're feeling all angst this morning. Um let that aside. God's still in control. God is moving and God is going to work. And he is who he says he is. And he will always remain those things. No matter what the political climate may be like, God is still who he is. Can you say amen to that? So the first thing I want to remind us of is that, is that God is our strength. When we uh, feel feeble, when we feel weak, and I think it goes way beyond our physical strength, but our emotional strength, our spiritual strength, every being in our fiber that needs strengthened, it comes from God. Listen to what he says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29. He gives strength. My translation, the ESV says, he gives power. He gives power. He gives strength to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases strength strength. Do you need strength this morning? Do you need strength today? Is there something that you're facing? Is there something you're going through that, that you know you can't handle it on your own? God is the source of your strength. He gives strength to the faint. The second thing that I, I love in this list is that God is all wise. And maybe in that situation that you are in, you need wisdom. Not only do you need strength, but you need wisdom and how to respond to it. I always like to say that I, I cannot control anything that happens in my life. The only thing I can control is the response that I give to that situation or that person or that event. And in those times, we really need wisdom. We need the knowledge of God applied in that circumstance. James says this, very familiar verse, James chapter 1, verse 5. He says, if any of you lacks wisdom... Let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. Notice he says that we ask God, and God generously, he's not holding back wisdom. He wants us to have his wisdom. He wants us to apply his wisdom in our lives and in situations. And if we ask, James goes on to say, but, but if one asks, he must ask in faith. And when God gives that wisdom, we need to act on that wisdom that God gives. And I've found many times that the wisdom that God gives kind of seems counterintuitive in some way to what uh, natural wisdom would be. Well, that's because God is all wise and he knows all things. And so ask God for wisdom. He will give it. And then we apply it in our lives and in our situation. The third thing is that, that God is our protector. We've seen that so many times through the Psalms as David and the other psalm writers write uh, and, and praise God for his hand of protection. But in Exodus, I, I, I recall as Moses was about to go to Pharaoh, Exodus chapter 14, verse 14, um, God reminds Moses, Moses, the Lord will fight for you. You only have to be silent. 
So often we think it's our battle, but the Bible says the battle belongs to the Lord. Uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and high places. And, and God is the only one who can do battle for us. Our responsibility in that, God tells Moses, just sit back and be silent. <laughs> for some of us, it's hard. It's hard to be silent. Um, Jennifer will pray for you to have wisdom and guidance and strength. Uh, but, but ask God. He gives wisdom, he gives strength, and, and God is our protector in those situations. Just be silent, trust in him, and wait for him. God is also our provider, that's number four. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. God will supply. Now, sometimes God may use other means, it may come from another source, it may come from an opportunity that God may give to you and I uh, to, to, to meet the needs that we have, if they're financial or if they're resources. But the dependency there is on God to meet our needs according, in accordance with his riches in glory. Now, of course, this not only applies in monetary means, but in everything that we have in life. We are needy. Can everybody say, I am needy? We need God, and God will supply every need that we have according to his riches and glory, whether it be emotional needs, whether it be physical needs, whether it be spiritual needs. God is our source and our provider. God is our refuge, number five. God is our refuge. Psalm 9, verse 9 says this, The Lord is a stronghold for the, for the oppressed. A stronghold in times of trouble. God is our refuge. We can run to him. We can find shelter in him. We can find comfort in him. There's no other place that I'm aware of in my life where I have hit some really hard times that, that while I may get comfort and encouragement for others, ultimately, God is my refuge. Number six, God is our companion. Some of you today may feel as though uh, you're, you're abandoned, that maybe you don't have friends that seem to be close, maybe you're lonely, uh, but I want to remind you that, that God is our companion and God wants to be our companion. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, as Joshua is about to take over the helm from Moses and he's about to enter into the promised land where there are giants, where there are enemies that they're going to have to conquer. Joshua uh, is reminded by God, have I not commanded you, God says, to be strong and be courageous? Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Are you afraid of COVID? Are you afraid of um, what the next four years might bring? Remember, that, that God is your constant companion. He sticks closer than a friend. He sticks closer than a brother. God is your constant companion. If you're alone physically in life, uh, remember that there's no other human being that can fill that void in that place as your companion. I would even go to say this, that particularly to married relationships, uh, so oftentimes we, we can look to our mate to fulfill those things that only God can fulfill for us. Sandy is great. She's marvelous. Um, <laughs> but there are certain things that she cannot fulfill for me. Those can only be fulfilled in God. And it goes the other way. I'm not so great. Um, I lack a lot. But there are things that Sandy needs that only God can fulfill. Uh, God is our constant companion. God is also our shepherd, Psalm 23. Oh, don't we love this? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. And of course, we could really elaborate on what it means to be uh, the shepherd, that God is our shepherd. He is our 
protector. He's our provision. He's the one that leads us to those places of resources. He's the one that protects us from those elements that, uh, that we may not even be aware of. He's the one that disciplines us and holds us near to him. He's the one that rescues us when we're about to fall off the cliff. God is our shepherd. And I love this. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Oh, thank God this morning for the Holy Spirit. Number eight, God is our helper. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 13. He says, Fry the Lord, your God. Hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, Fear not. I am the one who helps you. God is your helper. Do you need his help today? Call out. He loves to respond to us in his nature and character and to meet us in those times where we need help. For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not, for I am the one who helps you. Number nine, God does the impossible. <laughs> God does the impossible. When it seems as though everything is about to fall apart, God is able to do the impossible. So many of you have that testimony in your life that, that God was able to, not God did the impossible in a situation that it seemed to be that there was no other possible way of deliverance. Luke chapter 18, verse 27, Jesus says this. He said, what is impossible with man is possible with God. Sometimes I think God allows us to diminish every resource that may be available to us through our own means. When we face a situation, a time in life, and we, we go to the bank, we go to friends, we, we call on a counselor, all of those different things, and God can use those things, certainly. But when it seems as though all of our resources are exhausted, I think God intentionally sometimes lets us try to tap into every one of those resources so that we might know that, look, hey, JMO, what was impossible through all these natural resources that you have access to, what, what's impossible for them, now I'm going to show you that I am the one who has all possibility in my hands. And what is impossible with man is possible with God. Lastly, just know that God loves you. God loves you, not because of anything that you have done, but God is love. God's love will never increase for you. God's love will never diminish for you or towards you. God loves. You see, it's, it's hard for us to grasp that sometimes because our love often as we extend it to others is so, so very conditional. You do this for me, and I'll love you. You do that for my kids, and I'll love you. Um, if you do that to me, yeah, my love's going to diminish. God loves you. God loves you. His love will never cease. His love will never end. His love will never fade. His love is unconditional, and it's based on His grace. That it's not that anything that we have done but that he loved us first. And we love him because he has first loved us. He's the initiator in that love relationship. Paul in Romans chapter 5, verse 8 says, But God shows his love for us in that when we were sinners, Christ died for us. Romans chapter 8. What shall be able to separate us? There's absolutely nothing that will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Bask in those 10 things this morning. And I want to close with uh, just singing uh, this song to the Lord. It was, it was on my heart and on my mind when I woke up this morning. I think the worship team sang it last Sunday morning during our worship. Uh, but what a beautiful name. the beginning, one with God, the Lord Most High, your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you, our Christ, what a 
What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. brought out of heaven down my sin was great your love was greater what could separate us now what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my what a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this, what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Hold you, bell has before you. Silence the boast of sin and grave. Heavens are roaring, praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no right. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Let's sing that again, but let's sing what a wonderful, what a wonderful name it is, what a wonderful name it is. What a wonder you are, you are so gentle, so pure and so kind. Like the morning star, Jesus, what a wonder you are. Well, go about your day worshiping him and everything that you do, Paul reminds us to do unto the glory of God.
I love you. I look forward to seeing you either in person or one of our media platforms this weekend, 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. God bless you. Have a great day.